Hi, Mike Donnie for Fire Engineering. Thanks for coming back, reading another article, and checking out another training video. In this video, we'll look at what we talked about in that article. The three post vertical or dead shore, the double T, and a 45 and 60 degree raker. I'm going to really try to simplify how these work and the construction behind them. We'll start with the double T. Up top here, you can see our captured load. Our captured load is pushing down. The job of our shoring system is to prevent it from pushing down any further. It's going to capture that weight and transfer it into the ground. Okay. So what we have here is a header or a top plate, verticals or uprights, sole plate. Load is collected by the top plate or the header. It's brought down the verticals, hits the sole plate, and it's terminated into the ground. We have these two 12 by 24 gussets made of three-quarter plywood. They tie each upright together. Now, if you think about this, these two solid connections are going to stop this system from wanting to rack to the left or to the right, depending on what kind of force hits it. All these systems here are engineered to be earthquake proof. So if you had that earthquake, this system is going to see left and right movement. The bottom here are half gussets. So a true gusset is 12 by 12. These are 6 by 12 gussets. All right, they're put on here. You can see there's a four nail pattern and a four nail pattern. Up top here, you have a 14 nail pattern and you have an eight uh, nail pattern. Plywood into dimensional lumber is all 8D nails. Behind these half gussets, which you can't really see, are 2x4 wedges. The job of these wedges is we'll slip them underneath the verticals before we make these connections and we'll drive them together. When we drive them together, it creates that upward force and downward force. What that does for us is it snugs this shoring system into place. Remember, we're not looking to move this. We don't want to snug it so much that this load the we're capturing starts moving up. That's not the object. We want to keep it where it is, catch the load where it is. Outside of constructing this perfectly to all the standards, the next most important thing is to make sure this soaring system is plumb or perfectly straight. If you remember back from our last video, gravity wants to come straight down. It's going to follow a straight line. So if this soaring system all right, is kicked out a little bit, gravity is coming straight down, it's going to see that soaring system and it's going to want to kick it right out. So bring your level out, make sure it's nice and plumb, and set it in place. The other side of me here, we have a three post dead shore or three post vertical shore. Same concept. Header or top plate, verticals, sole plate. You're capturing a load, it's coming down the verticals and being terminated through the sole plate into the ground. You can see we have what's called a midpoint brace and we have cross bracing. But that midpoint brace is acting just like these gussets. It's preventing that racking force left and right. These cross braces are preventing any kind of torsional force. Okay. Rule of thumb is eight foot and above, you're going to put this midpoint brace. Now you have half gussets here. You get a four and four nail pattern. You come down here, you can see the same half gussets, and behind them, again, are the two by four wedges. So before we make these gusset connections and these cross brace connections, we're going to take those wedges, we're going to drive them together, we're going to put an upward force on the verticals and a downward force, we're going to snug it right in place. Same deal with that, same deal with this, keep it perfectly plumb, so we take that load and gravity and bring it straight down into the ground. So I hope this explains it, brings it to light a little bit more, gives you a good picture of what you just read. Uh, we're going to stop now. Go do another video and we'll cover the 45 and 60 degree rakers.